Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Integrated Entrepreneur. I am here with my co-host Keith. Keith, what's going on, big dog? What's up, my man? How are you? I'm good, man. Good weekend. Got a lot done. Uh, completed 75 hard, and now I'm on to phase one starting tomorrow, which is great. Which is great. And that no, leads no to 30 day break. You the 30 day break is after phase one Got before it. you start phase two. Got it. Okay. Got it. Yep. And this is a perfect lead into what we're going to talk about today. Building consistency starts with doing the little things. Reps, right? baby. Reps. Reps. So 75 hard is the perfect microchasm for this. Why? Because you have to do all the little things every single day to move on to the next day and not start from the beginning. Right. All right. And what happens is when you do that, you're building consistency, but more importantly, you're building momentum and momentum that's going to carry you through your goals help your team move forward, and all the good things in life that everyone is building towards, it starts with doing the little things and getting little wins and turning those little wins into big wins. Right. Yeah. Breaking big rocks into little rocks. Yeah. And here's here's one cool thing that people don't talk about too often is what when you're consistent, it's much easier to get the results you want out of other people. I'm going to give you guys a specific example. Every year since 75 Hards came out, I've done it once, if not gone through 75 Hard twice. What does that mean? It means my kids and everyone in my house consistently sees me doing it. And what do they see when they wake up? They see daddy working out. Okay, guess what my kids started to do, Keith? And I this bet is they a, started eating bonbons and sitting on the couch not doing shit. That's it. Exactly. It. I mean, working <laughs> out with you. That's what I yeah, mean. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> No, but now my kids, both of them, and they're nine and six, work out in the morning without being asked, and they read at night without being asked. It's crazy. So huh? imagine if the only thing I ever got out of 75 hard was that. It was absolutely worth it. Right. Yeah. It's, it's funny what uh, the old saying, success leaves clues, starts with consistent – Daily action items. Yep. Right? What do they teach us in the military? The very fucking first thing you do when your feet hit the ground is make your goddamn bed. Yep. Not so that your bed is made, so that you are you fall into a routine of getting shit done the moment your eyes open. And not only did they make you make your bed, but you were timed. You got 60 seconds to make that bitch. <laughs> it better be perfect, or the entire barracks is getting overturned, right? So yep. It's the same concept that, that the military trains. It's the same concept that, you know, the, the, we see someone today, you and I, mm -hmm. at the levels of success we are, that guy's doing something right. Well, we mimic that because yeah. we know, like, why reinvent the wheel? No, By the way, you can't reinvent the wheel. It's just regurgitated shit, you know, that every other Joe Schmo puts a spin on. Yep. But if the activity that we're watching you do is successful, go mimic that, right? So Absolutely. your kids are mimicking your actions because they mm -hmm. see you being successful. They see certain characteristics and traits. Guess what happens in with your employers and employees? Same thing. Same thing, right? So if you're an employer out there that's getting your ass kicked because you can't get results you want from your squad i bet if you start doing half the things in the right manner that they'll follow suit yeah well it makes it easier to hold everybody else accountable too if you're not doing it as the leader how can you anticipate or expect anybody else to do that if you're not right you can't you know think about it like this if you everyone here if you run, have a business you have a sales team okay for the most part, you should. When someone on your team is struggling, what's the first thing that you look at? You look at what are their daily actions? How do you do that? You're looking at the calls, okay? If that person's making the right amount of calls, then you know something is wrong with the calls themselves. Right. The reality is most times they're probably not doing the activities needed consistently enough to build those wins, okay? But there's only two things that could be going wrong. They're either not doing the work or they're doing the work wrong. 
If they're doing right. the work, work wrong, it's easy. Go listen to a couple of the calls, see what adjustments you can make, maybe do a few for them live and let them hear you. But if they're not doing the work, that that's all the answers that you need. That's so, easy too. You get a pink slip. Yeah. <laughs> you get yeah. asked not to come back. You're on vacation. Yeah. I'm on. Forever. <laughs> for, at least from this office. Yeah, yeah. at least from this. <laughs> team. Yeah. That's another thing. Build consistency and firing fast and not firing from an emotional standpoint. We were having this conversation earlier today with someone who's like, I should have fired this. I knew I should have fired this guy nine months ago and I kept him and now it's cost me a million dollars. Well, as soon as you get that gut feeling, you should probably investigate it. Right. Yeah. But you got to be consistent in all these avenues. Right. So consistently, it, it really does foster trust and reliability. Yeah. Right? Both in yourself and and the people that are watching you as a, as their leader, right? Whether that's yeah. your kids, your spouse, whoever, right? And, and being consistent is a, a, a huge key to success. You don't just show up for a week and then stop doing the shit and expect it to still continue to blossom and, and cultivate yeah. success. It is a daily Absolutely. fucking task. Yeah. Here's what I've noticed, too, over the years. <laughs> and and this goes back, this is 10 years at least of data with me running sales teams. There is a real, real um, block with people when they have their first record month or their biggest month. This always happens. At least it's always happened to me. It happens everywhere, bro. It, uh, okay, cool. You know what I'm going to say. 100%. So somebody crushes it, absolutely crushes it. Okay, you're like, wow, this is my next rock star. And then the next month, absolute trash. The month after that, absolute trash. And then you have a sit down with them. And you realize that they stopped doing what made them so successful. They, they thought that the gravy train was just going to keep on running without feeding those little micro daily inputs that it needed to run off of. And so you see people pull back subconsciously. They're not meaning to do this, guys. I promise you. No, there's not one salesperson that does that type of behavior intentionally. They just don't know it. And I'm going to tell you something. I still, I'll be transparent and blunt as possible. I haven't figured out a solution because I've told people after I've noticed this little phenomenon that, hey, this is something you want to watch out for. Okay. I've seen this repeat itself. And guess what? it still repeats itself. Yep. Okay. It's the, the lack of compound effect, right? Exactly. The compound effect is in consistent, small, daily consumable wins over and over and over yep. and over that will produce significant results. Mm -hmm. Most of these guys come in, they hit a fucking grand slam. They're like, yep, foot off gas, foot on brake. All good. <laughs> I don't have to do shit. I'm kosher. If I just yep. do one of these a month, I can make a million dollars. Well, yeah. you, you actually, you're not going to do that. That one yeah. a month, you, you, you hit the unicorn out of the park the first day. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you better get back in, in the zoo and, and start hunting. Again, right. Yeah. And, uh, and that's the thing around, like, one of the questions I ask, which helps me understand if that's the type of person that they are who, who like to hit a home run and then take a week off. Do you enjoy hunting in the zoo or do you like hunting in the forest? Because if you like hunting in the zoo, I already know you're lazy and you're just going to look for that prime shot once every you know couple of weeks and you're going to take it. Whereas if you consider yourself to be a forest hunter, it's an ongoing scavenger hunt, right? We're consistently trying to find great clients, great people to help. And that question has helped me identify that. I, I still haven't mastered it by any stretch of the imagination, but it's definitely helped uh, minimize some of the head against wall campaigns that I have at five 30 when, when everyone leaves. <laughs> you <laughs> so. know, this entire time I heard that question, I'm just thinking how I would answer it myself. Here's the reality. I rather hunt in the fucking zoo. However, once I'm done in that zoo, if I know you're bringing me to another zoo, I would hunt in that zoo too. And I would keep doing it until there's no more animals left. So I don't know. I, I, I don't know if 
how I'd love to know how it turned out for the people that. Answered yeah, I don't, bro. That. I don't is know it, if you're lazy or if you're smart. Which one is it? <laughs> that's no, but that's that's honestly like, hey, okay, cool. There's all these animals. I need you to kill them. Cool. Bring me there. I t- I'll take care of it. Done. Once that's done, point me to the next fucking zoo. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I I think that's a smart way to answer it, but yeah, I don't. I you don't had know. too long to think about it. That's the problem. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, I mean uh, the thing about it is, and I think this is it's just often overlooked, man. And, and the shit is is absolutely fucking simple. It, mm-hmm. It's pick your four or five things. Andy Frisella calls it the power list, right? We've heard a lot of people call top three to five things that you must do every day to win the day. And regardless of the outcome of the day at work or home or whatever, if you just check the box on those four or five things, over time, the compound effect will show up at your door. And you will see the victory and your ability just to stay consistent. The problem is that we've got a world full of fucking slackers who look for the shortcut in everything they do. And we've got a world full of innovative geniuses who are innovating and creating new shit for these people to get even more lazy on, i.e. AI and all this other shit, right? Yeah. Yep. I I see it. I see it. Here's here's one thing, though, and one little caveat. Resumes and shit these days. I can tell. Did I break up? I can hear you. No, you're good. Oh. So these these guys, the, the problem is like when I'm getting resumes, I can I can tell who literally put the shit through chat GPT and didn't fucking touch another word in it or change it at all. Right? Versus yeah. the people who sat down and, and put effort behind it. Mm-hmm. And you can tell that in Facebook posts and all this other shit out there in the universe. And you're just like, dude, if if you're that fucking lazy now, like how much more lazy are you gonna be in five years? Holy I, shit. I I agree with what you're saying, but let me just play devil's advocate here, Keith. That same person that put it in chat GPT and got it done and got it out to you quick, it shows that they're quicker and faster accomplishing the same task as the other guy, right? So there is a different way to look at it. And if that person can still get the job done using the tools, okay, maybe they can actually get the job done faster because they're good at figuring out solutions. I forget the quote and who said this, um, but it is someone that is very famous that a lot of people follow basically said, if you want to find the easiest way to do something, give it to a lazy person to do because they will try, they will figure it out the easiest way possible. So there are two sides to that coin. I am, not, I am one. I am a big proponent of, of Work your ass off until you figure it out, okay? There are some people that can figure it out a lot quicker without the amount of headache and stress as someone like me who is technologically deficient, okay? (laughs) Um, And I have to hire people that are good with tech because I am not, right? So I think there's ways of looking at it, and I don't think there's one standard uh, metric that you can say, all right, this, this works, this doesn't work. The one thing I will say is people are much more likely to quit because they're not getting the result that they want. And this is one of those times where building consistency is not something you could ever lay your foot off the gas or stop. Right. right? Most of the time you guys aren't accomplishing what you were set up to accomplish, not because that you can't do it. Okay. It's because you haven't done the thing long enough when you haven't put enough action towards the thing that you're trying to accomplish. And so you still might be, let's say 20 hours, 40 hours, maybe even 400 hours away from figuring it out. And you're going to stop because you're not seeing the results. Well, guess what? Sometimes there's invisible progress. Okay. When you guys go and try something 10 different ways and you find out 10 different ways how not to do something, guess what? There's still invisible progress there. You figured out 10 ways that don't work. And now you got to try another 10 to see if you can figure out 10 ways it didn't work. Well, maybe one way it does work. Right. And that's what, that's what we're really getting at is those are the guys that need to stay with it and stick 
with the consistency. Okay. Yeah. Please invisible don't mistake progress. That. <laughs> dope. That is a dope statement. Invisible progress. No one ever takes a minute to look at that because they're just so defeated. So yeah. right now I'm going through that, right? I'm mm -hmm. learning self-educating myself, right? Self-educating myself. That is the dumbest thing I've ever said. I am trying to teach myself how to create automations and absolute a, a foreign language to me. Okay. And to your point, it's like none of that is going to show up as a progress to me right now because I still don't know how to make it work. But there's invisible progress because I'm learning pieces of the puzzle, right? Mm -hmm. I can have some conversation. I can carry a little bit of conversation with people. Whereas a week and a half, two, three weeks ago, couldn't tell you the first thing about any of it, right? So now that mm -hmm. I look back, I'm like, well, I can't build out a complete CRM or website right now because I don't know all the tools, but I know some bigger chunks of it and what it means. So mm -hmm. that invisible progress needs to be something I reflect back on that I myself am not good at, right? And I'm, I'm certain 99% of the people that listen to this are, are probably the same of like, they never just give themselves a, hey, good good at bat. You did well. It didn't work. Yeah. Try it again, right? Yeah. Figure, figure it out a different way. So that, that's a good reminder for everyone out there to, uh, you know, ask yourself how many times you gave up on something you couldn't figure out and just imagine if you gave it another shot, what would it have worked, right? Because mm -hmm. the invisible progress report card didn't get checked. Yeah. It's good that's good. But how do you know that, that it's there, right? You have to realize, hey, I've done this for this long. I found out that these things don't work. I found out that I'm on the right path, right? Sometimes it's not that obvious or evident, guys. And what I'm here to tell you is every single person that you look up to, that you are inspired by, got their ass kicked for a hell of a lot longer than you realize or anyone realizes, okay? and went through this exact same cycle of they had in this quote unquote invisible progress. And now they got past it to actually having the real results because they were what they were consistent the entire time finding ways that didn't work. And now all of a sudden they have this great thing that other people just think they locked themselves or willed themselves. God, I hate that shit. Okay. No, but that's the reality, right? Like, oh, it is. Yeah. Everyone thinks that Andy Frisella or fucking any of these people, Jesse Itzler, like, oh, that guy just woke up one morning and shit excellence. And now all of a sudden is a made man. Yeah, no, they've been getting their ass kicked for 20 plus years and you weren't yeah. along for the ride. You just showed up. Yeah. That doesn't discount the work and blood, sweat and tears. These people. Put in, right. Yeah. You're on your own path for 10 plus years, 15 plus years. People ask me yeah. all the time, how'd you go from being a fucking police officer to a business guy? I've got my ass kicked for 17 years figuring it out. Yeah. And I, I probably something... got another 17 years ahead of me. <laughs> yeah, no shit. I want to put something in perspective for everybody. All right. Let's say someone has a 20 year head start. Let's say Jesse is it's probably more than that. Okay. But you might be comparing your day 90. Okay to his day 7,300, all right? That's what a 20-year head start looks like. Right. Let's say it's a 10-year head start. Well, you're still comparing it to day 3,650. And that's you're on day, what, 90? Yes. That's a lot of reps. That's what, I, that's what I mean, okay? And I guarantee you, these guys were consistent. They weren't letting, you know not being able to do one thing or two things stand in their way. They just kept pushing through and pushing through and pushing through. And the longer that goes on, the better you get at handling situations. The more experience you have, the right. more people you've added to your network and your roller decks to figure shit out. Okay. So the people that have the most success stay consistent and understand what invisible progress looks and feels like. And they're just doing the thing a lot more and a lot more frequently than what you're right. doing. Yeah. And the longer you stay consistent, the, the better shit gets, right? 
-hmm. the longer you eat healthy, the better you feel, the more energy, the better your sleep, the less you weigh, more muscle. Yeah. It's the same concept in business, right? When you show up, it's going to improve your decision making. It's going to help you build like mental toughness and resilience. Like all of these things are a compound effect of just showing up and doing the tasks daily. Yeah. Not worrying about the result. Worrying about, did you do it? Who yeah. cares how it came about, right? So if like one of your tasks is make 10 new sales calls a day, nowhere in there does it say sell four things of the 10 you call. It just says make the 10 calls. Yeah. Right. Key performance indicators. Make the 10 calls because at some point, the average is for every 10 people you call, you sell two or three things. Well, you may go five days in a row and strike out 50 calls and no sales. But then the first 10 calls of the next week, you may sell eight things. Right. Yeah, exactly. And that's the component where a lot of people fucking give up on Friday and they're like, nah, I'm going back to the rotor rooter plumbing nine to five, right? Nothing yeah. against plumbing. I just use that as an example, but that's the reality is like entrepreneur mentality. I hear it all the time through people that we're coaching is like, man, it would just be so easy to go back to my nine to five, right? You and I hear it all the time within our circles. Mm -hmm. is like, if you don't feel like going to work at fucking Walmart at McDonald's twice a week, you're not doing business ownership, right? Like that should be, how you feel twice a week, right? At Burn least. it down and fucking go get a job at McDonald's, at, right? Like, at least. And, and you know, we, we use that as a joke, but that's the reality of this, uh, like this mental head space that we get into, even at, you know, the layers of business that we're in now. And yeah. I'm sure people well ahead of us probably feel the same way at a much <laughs> bigger capacity, right? Absolutely. So... The consistency thing that I think if people hone in and take that every single morning to heart and just control that controllable, check the box on your three to five things, shit will start showing up as a, a victory in your world, whatever they may be, health, wealth, whatever it is your five fucking to do's are. Just start Absolutely. there. That's all you got to do. And don't make them exponentially big either. That's where I think another no. people are like, oh, I'm going to. I'm going to wake up tomorrow and make 75 sales calls when you've never made one in your whole life. It's not going to work. Yeah, that's a great point. Chunk, whatever they are, especially if they're larger projects on your to-do list, there's nothing wrong with breaking it down into smaller actionable steps and knocking, let's say, two or three off every single day because it will still allow you to build that momentum. You're still checking off those boxes, and you're still getting closer and closer to your goal. What's very deflating is putting things on your list, not fucking doing it, and then going back and saying, oh, I'm a piece of shit. This will never work. Because that's the reality, guys, is when we lose momentum, we get into negative feedback loops, and then that actually gives us some type of anxiety around what we were trying to accomplish in the first place and makes it go – and hard, it's actually harder to go back and pick it up where you left off when you're not consistent. All right. So please, if you're going to use this system, the system works amazing, but make sure that you're knocking it off every day. Because if you go and run into a, a couple of days where you don't, it's very easy to get anxiety around that particular piece and then push it off to the side and say, fuck it. You know, I'll do everything else but that. I know from personal experience, I'm telling you, I've done that before. So this is coming from the overachiever, Jonathan. <laughs> This is coming from a space of I want to do, I want to climb Mount Everest. Cool. Yeah. Do you own any climbing gear? No. Awesome. We're off to a great start. Uh, I'll, be the, I'll be the first guy to do it naked. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you're going to freeze your ass off. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, the, here, here, I have uh, a good one, real quick. And I'm going to, this will be on a different show for us, but I, I've been posting. I'm getting my son to start his first business. Um, last week, he actually also made 200 bucks for the week. Uh, sure, he's doing go. 3D printing, okay? So this weekend, we went through and I said, all right, you want a website? We'll get it. It's going to cost money. I'm going to put it up. You're going to pay me back. And I'm walking him through this whole process of entrepreneurship. But we do it 
weekend by weekend so it doesn't impact his school. And then he does what he does throughout the school week, which is cool. And we go back to business and business development on the weekends. And it really stressed out my nine-year-old thinking he's got to pay me back like $1,000 for this website. All right. I mean, literally, that's all he talked about all day Sunday. And I'm like, Jay, everything will work out as long as you're committed and you move forward and you take this necessary steps that you have to take. Right. It's very hard to explain that to a nine-year-old. But seeing it and building a small business from its infancy kind of makes you appreciate how far you've come. And that's one thing I want to, anybody listening to this, I really hope that if you have kids and you run a business, at some point, take the time to help them build theirs, even if it's a lemonade stand, because you will appreciate one, working on something so raw and so new in, if, in its uh, infancy. And then two, the lessons that you're going to teach your children will stay with them forever and they will never learn that shit in school. Okay, ever. It's the biggest gift I've given myself and him was doing this project because it's created something else for us to bond over. And it's taught him some great, great, great lessons about running your own business at a very early age. All right. So please consider that, guys. And uh, I will try to document this entire journey and post it. Either we'll do it on this show or we'll put up a, a YouTube special because I do think it's something that more people need to do with their kids. Yeah, that's huge. Love it, man. Well, you've heard it here. Consistency wins. Do the damn thing every day. Don't look for results day one. They won't show up. Other than you saying you could check the boxes. Right? Right. And I think if people could really hone in on that, they will see long-term changes in whatever it is that their goals are, right? So consistency is key. This is something that this isn't earth shattering, groundbreaking. This is something that people will refuse to look at and think about because it's too easy. Yeah. You know, like or drink a gallon of water a day. All you gotta do is drink it. <laughs> Most people can't figure that out, right? It's too yeah. hard and then they give up. So. You know, I think what a lot of people will learn through what you just went through again, 75 hard, is it's all about time commitment, Mm -hmm. time prioritization. And if you can, if it's important and you prioritize it, you can check the box. That's literally the simplest form you can put it in. 100%. Go go prioritize. Stick to the little things. Do some shit the right way. Build some cool shit, guys. All right, you guys heard it here. Do us a favor, share this. It's the only way this will get out. We're not running ads to it. Please share this with other people that need to hear it. And if you guys have questions, reach out to me, reach out to Keith. We would love to do a full Q&A on any and all the questions you guys send to us. So please send those in. We appreciate you guys, and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.